Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear people of God, happy Mother's Day. Now, it's a special day, I know, and uh, the words that were read in the gospel message today, some moms may actually be able to say that to us. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Now, none of us chose our parents, but maybe mom did plan to have us. You see, as the old expression goes, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. Our family is our family. It's not our choice. And today, Jesus goes off and talks about friends and how we choose friends. And I'd like to invite you all to think about the first friends you ever had. Who did you reach out to? And how did they become your friends? Now, I remember the first friends that I had and understand what starts that. It's really the first time outside where you're socializing outside the nucleus of your family. You're going out into the real world beyond the ones that you grew up with or your, your brothers, sisters, and parents. So it's a private individual who's moving out to a social setting. So how did you begin your first friendships? Now, personally, I remember my first friends. Now, who were they? Very similar to yours. Very similar activity. They lived in my neighborhood. They were across the street. We were about the same age. We developed the same interests. We had the same familiar setting. My neighbors were their neighbors. We knew each other. Our parents knew each other. It was a comfort level. We gathered together and were to, all in one because we reached out. We had common interests, common surroundings. And that's where a friendship begins, the bond. Now then technology came into my life as many others and other things that took place where your friendship went beyond your neighborhood block and you went elsewhere. Mode of transportations were introduced. Remember your first bicycle? Driving and going beyond, extending the boundaries and going to school and meeting different people? Your sphere expanded and the friends started coming from different areas. Now some of us have friends, those initial friends in our lives we're still in touch with. I'm blessed that I am that I still have a lot of those relationships. And once I got to my bicycle and I went a little bit further in the neighborhood and got to know others, it's one friend I'm thinking of now who I still keep in touch with. He's a friend. He's a true friend that always has been through most of my life. And he once told me he was aggravated because at work, he has a colleague that's with him and always refers to everybody as my friend. How is my friend today? And it agitates him. And I'm, why does that bother you? He's not my friend. I said, why, you don't like him? He says, no, it's not that I don't like him. I like him a lot. I like to hang out with him. And he's a good guy. But to me, my definition of a friend is take a situation. It's 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning. Torrential rains. You suddenly get two flat tires on the Cross Bronx Expressway. Who are you going to call? I'm not calling that guy I work with because he's not going to show up. Be prepared. I'm calling you because I know that you're my friend. And no matter where I am, what time it is or what the situation is, you're going to be there to help me. That's a definition of a friend. Now, Jesus is a friend to us. He says that in today's message. But over time and in the gospel and in times of antiquity, the definition of friend has changed and it's not the same as we understand today. You see, when we talk about friendships, we think there's like an affection. You know, we have something in common, but there's a relationship. It's more emotional. Same thing with another word that's thrown throughout this gospel message, love. That's emotional for us. But that's not the, the way that Jesus is talking about these two words. You see, in antiquity, like Aristotle and other philosophers talked about friendship, 
Friend in Greek is phylos. Phylos means friend. Now, what is the opposite of friend? For us, we think friend, we think foe, an enemy. If you're my, if you're my friend, you're my friend. If you're not, the possibility is you're my enemy, friend and foe. But then they decided, or their opinion was, the opposite of a friend, of a phylos, was something different. It was called something different. In Greek, it's called kolox. Kolox means flatterer. Flatterer. Friend and a false friend. A false friend is somebody who acts like they're your friend. And how many people do we know that flatter us and are kind to us? But are they truly your friend according to this definition? What is their interest at heart? How many people are around us that are nice to us and kind? Are they doing it generally because their interest is to help us and they care about us? Or is it self-serving? Are they being nice because they expect something in return for that relationship? That's the word they're talking about, the flatterer. Is it friend or flatterer? Look at the people that we engage with in our daily lives. How many are truly friends? And how many just flatter us or take advantage of us or keep us nearby because there's something that they can get out of us? And Jesus is talking about this in the gospel message. What is of interest of the people? And it's interesting here in John. Let's look at the gospel, what's happening in the story. This is Jesus' farewell discourse as they explain it. It's the final words before his arrest and ultimate crucifixion. Judas just left the gathering. Friend or flatterer. He is the one who is going to betray Jesus. And after this, Peter is going to deny Jesus. And Jesus knows all of this. So his conversation, his intimate conversation is about the friends, the phylos, and also the kolax, the flatterers. What's your definition of friendship? Who's going to be there? Who is going to lay down their life for you? come thick or thin. Who's going to be there for you on the side of the Cross Bronx Expressway in the middle of the night? That's the friendship that Jesus is talking about. It's the loyalty and allegiance. And Jesus has picked us. He has taken the friendship and said that I'm no longer your servant. We are equal. Where we have to care for one another and look out for one another and not just flatter each other and say nice things about one another. We are here to care for one another and look out. Friendship has a responsibility. And Jesus' message is there is a responsibility to following him. We have a responsibility to be faithful to Jesus. So as we move forward in this season of Easter, let us remember the friend that we have in Jesus. And again, if you're stuck on the side of the road and you don't know who to call, maybe, just maybe, we have to look to that old country song by Carrie Underwood and Jesus, take the wheel, because Jesus will get us anywhere we need to go, because he truly is our friend. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.